see this person right here. That's mama. That's what she loved to do, which is be with her angels, including Judy. And she passed away a year ago, as almost everyone that follows me knows. Uh, anyone that doesn't know, that's my wife Judy's mother, biological mother, but I still called her mom. I didn't call her mom, I actually called her mom. And uh, the reason I wanted to chat about her is because the other thing she loved to do was cook. See, Mama and I have a relationship that goes way, way, way back. Mama cooked adobo for me the first time I met her in the 90s. So we're talking 25 years ago. Uh, that's how long I've known her. And I remember I was just friends with Judy and I went over to their house. I didn't know mama at all. I didn't know about her amazing cooking and she had adobo. And so she fed me adobo and rice. And as simple as that was, the first time eating that dish, mind blowing. Now, not only was that adobo such a significant dish for me in terms of the first Filipino food I ever really experienced, but also my reaction to it as well. I was so animated, I was so grateful, I was saying how <laughs> delicious this was, and guess who really loved that? Mama. And so that started the bond and the relationship and the special connection that we had when it came to food, especially her cooking. And I still remember that day uh, so clearly. That's what's nuts about it. I mean, all the memories that I've got in my life, I remember eating adobo with mama so clearly. So even more so than what I was doing with Judy or why I was even there, I remember eating that and mama's reaction to me reacting to her dish and that was the beginning. And so a lot of you might not know this, but Judy and I were friends for years. We're talking close to a decade and I was in the friend zone, but uh, I became really close to her and her family, including mama, because she would always cook amazing food. She'd always invite me over, even when Judy wasn't there. That was kind of the... Uh, unique relationship I had not only with Judy but the whole family but I think one of the reasons mama loved for me to come over is because I just showed so much appreciation for her delicious recipes I mean it's not like I was making it up everybody loves mama's cooking uh, whether it's just coming over for a meal at a family party as some kind of huge occasion mama's food to this day people say this dish is the best oh her below below uh, her lumpia her ponce i mean everything i i hear more about mama's cooking and how delicious it is from people than i do from people going to restaurants or to you know you know referencing professional chefs and of course I'm kind of biased and it's because I'm around that in my life right she's our mom and she's around our kids and of course my life is so interconnected anyways point being that's uh that was mama in the beginning and we got really close she used to call me her son which Weirdly, I was so proud of that. I mean, I had my own mom and my mom cooked me food. Um, I wasn't necessarily close with my mom, but I was, you know, like, I was proud of my mom. She took great care of me and she cooked delicious meals for us, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But when mama called me her son, I believe there's two reasons for it. Number one, it just showed how much she loved me and cared for me. She really did. Like they would bring me to family events. I remember I went with Judy and the family to Canada to visit family up there. And again, so much of it revolved around food. So some kind of event or party. But the second reason I loved it is because I was secretly crushing on Judy. Uh, you know, she was dating another guy, 100% respectful. I, I had no hidden motives. 
But for mom to call me her son, it was kind of like putting the stamp of approval on me. I had no chance in hell, honestly, of uh, connecting with Judy and dating her. I had a baby face. So it wasn't even an intention of mine. But when she said that, I was like, oh, wow. Well, at least her mom thinks I'm cool. So, so that was our relationship forever. And uh, eventually, I personally moved out of my house. And that was when my cooking journey started. And during that time, I was working a lot more. I had just graduated high school. I was going to college a little bit. And I had to cook for myself. So I wasn't going over to Judy and the families. I wasn't as connected to mama during this era. But I was starting to cook a lot more. But I was still friends with Judy. So periodically, I would go over to her house. And I would you know, go to family parties. And of course, I would enjoy mama's cooking. And it was always the same. I just loved eating mama's dishes. It was something unique. There wasn't any single person that I enjoyed eating their meals as much as I did mama's cooking. And that was just always a reoccurring theme. And I, I believe that that led into another, I'd say, uh, another phase of our relationship because I did eventually start dating Judy. That's a whole nother video, a whole nother story. This isn't about my romantic relationship with my wife. This is about my unique relationship with mama as her son. And frankly, to this day, I still call her, like when I pray, I call her mom. I don't call her mama, right? I reference her as mama to the kids, um, to Judy. But when I speak to her, She's my mom. Like, I, I don't know the difference because that's how close I got. But when I started dating Judy, things eventually did change. And it wasn't in a negative way, but of course, like, you got to put your guard on. Like, this guy wants to court my daughter. I mean, she already put the stamp of approval, but totally different ball game. You already can probably understand that. And you know, starting getting closer to Judy. Um, I was doing romantic things for her. I was, of course, being invited over. Um, I mean, really, Judy was just bringing me over at this point, uh, even before, you know, as her, well, at, at that time, we were best friends. But uh, it really changed. Things really changed when I started um, asking for her daughter's hand in marriage, okay? Uh, <laughs> because then, then it, the pressure was on. Now it wasn't just, I'm this, you know, happy-go-lucky kid that, you know, mama had fun feeding and it was Judy's friend. It was the man that was going to take care of her daughter. And I knew this, like, I understood this. This is why I'm all traditional. I wanted to ask for Judy's hand in marriage. And I could just tell through that dynamic was changing. All the while, by the way, I'm starting to cook a lot more as well. Um, at this time, we weren't doing anything on YouTube yet. Uh, we, you know, I was living my life. I was obviously like exploring my culinary curiosities. I was getting better and better. I'm still not even close, obviously, to Mama's cooking. Um, but when I did finally get married to Judy, um, you know. Mama was so happy. Now, set aside that things were kind of changing. One of the, the most heartfelt moments I had when I got married to Judy outside of my bond to her is when I would see Mama so emotional. Mama would cry and it was because she was so happy. And I knew that she was happy because what maybe she always wanted to happen was happening. And I was proud that she was proud that I was marrying Judy and vice versa, that she was proud of Judy. I mean, the whole thing was really powerful uh, because I'm not really an emotional person, like outwardly emotional. I try to keep things in. And yeah. And okay, so we got married, right? Um, <laughs> When did it really change? And by the way, this video is just supposed to be all love, okay? But I want to just share this story and you'll see for a reason. Um, when we had Juliana, 
when we finally gave birth, Judy gave birth, she did all the hard work, obviously, to our beautiful older daughter, older daughter, the oldest daughter, um, that's when my relationship to mama really changed in its dynamic. And the reason I bring that up is, of course, I love Judy, mama loves Judy, but now I'm the man that's, you know, taking care of her daughter, that's that. But when it came to the babies, right, and that's what mama uh, thought about all the girls, they were her babies, just like they're our babies. There was a conflict, there was definitely friction in how I personally wanted to raise the kids and how mama wanted to raise the kids. And I think for good reason, because mama was so involved. The girls didn't know life without mama being around because mama was so um, um, integral to everything we're doing. Like even just me, mama, me and Judy wanted to go on dates, have like a romantic trip. Mama was always there and she was always a uh, part of their lives. Obviously, even casually, she just bring food over. She's always cooking for the girls. The girls would go over to her and Papa's house. So she really took ownership, which I'm grateful that she did. But naturally, there'd be some disagreements. And so that's when me and Mama's relationship went from what I previously talked about to the new phase. This is kind of the, I'd say the third phase. Third phase being, it was about compromise, okay? Mama has to respect, and she did respect me and Judy, especially me, and how we want to do things. But I also had to compromise because I knew whatever Mama did in terms of how she wanted to raise the girls, what she fed them, what she gave them, was all in the spirit of love. It was all because she thought and believe this is how these girls should be cared for. And frankly, she's a grandparent. She's supposed to spoil the kids. But it still created tension. And uh, it was definitely different. Now, all the while, the wild thing about this is mom and I always connected when it came to food. So at the time, I was starting my uh, food channel on YouTube, which this is where you're watching. And you can actually see literally videos and videos and videos of mama teaching how to cook Filipino foods on my channel. Uh, there's so many different eras of that. Uh, beef steak, adobo. Uh, she was just always sharing her love of food. And I personally respected and thought very highly of mama's skills. As I was learning how to cook, I realized the true magic and wisdom of mama's skills. So I wanted to feature it. And then I wanted to learn about it myself too. Without any thought like, oh, I'm going to master these. It's like, hey, I want to be able to cook these too at home. Um, and so we did that. And, uh, you know, even when it came to mama's cooking, I was always just jumping for joy to get to try it. Uh, mama would bring something over and uh, if it was sitting on the counter, even if I had just ate, I always wanted to eat mama's food. You already know the rules. If you go to a Filipino's house and they offer you food, guess what? You have to eat it. Well, I wanted to eat it. It was, you didn't have to twist my arm. So that part of a relationship was almost as if it was separate um, from everything else. So no matter what was happening, and I'm going to share a moment where this was really obvious. The other thing that was happening in this phase, and we're talking now years and years and years, so the twins were born, um, you know, I'm getting way better at cooking, Judy's cooking too. Um, so we're, we're starting to provide all the food for the girls. I'm starting to master certain dishes. You know, I'm obsessed with Italian food, pasta, right? And I don't know if it's authentic or not, but people enjoy it. Uh, I love cooking some Japanese foods. And so mama, and by the way, I was also starting to tweak Filipino recipes, like my 24 hour adobo. And what was happening is now mama was coming over to our house, whether it was just because she was visiting or because there was some event, uh, family were over and she was tasting my cooking. So it kind of flipped. 
Now, mama was always flattering me and she would always say nice things, but I knew, I knew when she was telling the 100% authentic truth when it came to what was delicious and uh, what was maybe not like, well, could use some improvement. I could tell. And I didn't have to ask her or bug her about it. Even Judy would say, oh, she said this. Like, I, I, I just had this instinct. Maybe it was because of this connection. And it, I didn't realize at the time like th that we had this bond, not only around food, but with each other when it came to cooking. And there's two, two foods I do believe Mama really loved of my cooking. One was my 24 hour adobo. It's definitely not like the traditional adobo, but there's something magical about food when you take so much time to, to make it amazing and it's cooking for 24 hours in a sous vide machine. And I worked really hard on that dish. And I work hard on all the dishes, but that one I was like, I really want to master this. And mama ate it. I remember she was almost kind of like silent for a little bit. And she said, Oh, this is the best adobo. <laughs> Her adobo is the best adobo. It really is the best adobo. But I knew that she was kind of shocked. Like, oh my God, this is this is so delicious. <laughs> and everybody loves my 24-hour adobo. By the way, I have a whole video of that. You can watch it later. I'll link it up. It's got coconut milk. And that moment, it really struck me. Uh, I thought, oh, wow, she really thoroughly is enjoying this. And the second dish, I know for sure, like 100% certainty, was my lasagna. She loved my lasagna. And so many of you have tried to cook it or cooked it for your families and said, responded, whether in the comments or back to me, that you also love lasagna too, the recipe I shared. And my mom really loved it. I know because she would request it whenever... Maybe Judy would say, hey, is there anything Benji could cook? Oh, she's going to make dinner. That was probably the biggest request of anything from Mama. And I think Papa loved my lasagna too. And she would uh, love it even if it was a day old and she had to reheat it. And she would just say, oh my gosh, it was so good. Similarly to the way I would respond to her in the beginning. And that made me so happy that there was something I could cook for her and that would bring her joy. One thing you may not know because we have we didn't really uh, vlog about it is she had a really difficult life outside of what you saw in her videos on her channel and in our family vlogs and whatever other posts. She was dealing with a lot of health issues, and you know I told you the dynamic change with her and I. Uh, she would probably call me her son, but it, it wasn't the same chemistry. Uh, but when it came to food, it was the one thing I could do for her where it was just pure. And it was, it was all about like the feeling and showing love. So when she was going through all her health challenges, if I could create a moment for her that she creates for everybody else, that's cooking. That's, that's the ultimate universal gift. <clears throat> and if you cook for people, you know this, especially when you are so passionate about it, when you you want to cook to the point where you like make somebody's day or even kind of change your life. Like it's possible with food. It's crazy. We, we eat it all the time and we go to restaurants, get fast food, take out delivery, frozen foods. We cook stuff. We maybe do it every single day, but sometimes we forget about that power. And I, I would be able to give that gift to her. And mama did it for everybody else, like all the time, you know? She's really the kindest person I know, other than Judy. So generous, 
she doesn't judge you and determine how she's going to treat you. If you are in her vicinity, especially if you set foot in her house, and everyone I talk to says the same thing, especially as after she passed away, they said she, they felt like family walking into her home. She would just feed you. She just, and this is common for Filipinos and just the culture in that country and those people. She just put food in front of you and whatever it is you want. And you know, another thing I miss is uh, if I requested something, mama would cook it immediately. Like the next day she would have it uh, anytime. It was like my own restaurant. I could just say, mama, I really want beef steak. And it seemed kind of childish because I'm a grown man. I could, if I want to be state, I'll go buy it or I cook it myself. But she still was, she would, like I was her son, like I was her child, just like if Judy would request things. And I didn't take that for granted. I, I would thank her, of course. Um, anyways, and that that's what made Mama really special. You know, here in the Philippines, where I'm in the Philippines, by the way. We're celebrating her life because it's been a year. Hundreds, hundreds of people mourn her passing. And there's a ton of people at all these different celebrations and events uh, because she touched the lives of so many people with her conversations, her jokes, her laughter, her connection, but especially with her cooking and her food. It's this passive thing that you, of course, entertain people when they come to your home or you bring something to a party, but her food was next level. And, you know, we all miss mama for so many more important reasons because she was a grandmother to our girls, because she's Judy's mom, because she's close and special to so many people, but one of the things that I personally felt there was a loss of, and this might be selfish, but it's bigger than that. We lost her cooking. The ability to make someone's day through food that she did so casually. And so, yeah. You know, when she passed away, at the time, I wasn't doing food videos anymore. It's pandemic, it was just crazy. Three years. I was still vlogging with Judy. I was still cooking, but I wasn't sharing my love of food the same way. And when she passed, I thought, you know what? Because we had lost that part of our world, and I felt like, wow, what a like, tragedy. I wanted to share that with the world again. And in fact, not only do I want to do it, I want to ramp up my skills because I don't want the girls to not have that anymore. Now, this is a thing. If you're a mom, especially, but any parent that cooks, but especially moms, you start off not having any skills and your mom cooks everything. And then eventually you become the mom. And in my case, you become the parent that cooks. And then you have that skill. So for the last year, that secretly, I haven't even shared this with Judy, has been a goal of mine. Now I haven't been cooking as many Filipino foods, though I am going to, but that's what I've been doing. And uh, if you've been watching this channel, I've been cooking straight food vlogs every single day. And sometimes it's me shopping or of course me talking about food or whatever, but just sharing my love of food again. Just like mama shared her love of food with everybody. And you saw this if you watch her channel, she did this. This is where we had this connection, right? We not only wanted to cook food and feed people and eat food, we want to share it with the world. And I don't, I don't think that's what's, that's the beauty of YouTube. That's really the beauty of just social media and being connected because someone in a completely foreign country can learn from somebody here or that that ability it is priceless because food is a skill that can be extended to anybody that's close around you and it can give joy 
as well as life. So that's why I've been doing these food vlogs. There's many other reasons, okay? Um, it is our business. This is what we do as creators. But inside my motivation has been that. That's what I've been driven by these last, I want to say it's been 60 days now. I've been wanting to make this video, not only to share that, but also tell this story and really give you one more takeaway. I talked about the first recipe or the first dish I ever ate of Mama's, her first meal, right? Cooking. It was adobo. Sometime in January, before she passed, I went over to her house to grab something because Judy asked me to grab grab like something at the house that we had left there. I was kind of in a hurry. And so I grabbed it. I was like, Mama, I'm just here to grab this. Um, sorry, I'm kind of in and out. Um, I'll talk to you later. And as I'm walking by, she goes, oh, hey, are you hungry? I go, oh, um, not really, because I had just eaten. <laughs> sorry. Um, I said, not really, Mom. I called her Mom, not Mama. She goes, oh, okay, because I made some modobo if you want it. I was like, oh, dang. Yeah, I want some adobo. And so I sat there and I was all by myself. And it was just mom on the kitchen. And it was me at the little, uh, the nook table eating adobo. Like I did 25-ish years ago. And that was the last thing of mama's that I ate. That's pretty crazy. She was, she's definitely spiritual. She's definitely a believer. She also uh, believed in superstitions. But man, if you don't think that was, that was for a reason that I ate double as the last meal that she cooked for me. And I ate it by myself, like it did so many years ago, in mama's kitchen with mama, just the two of us. And we would always have conversations about food or whatever. And like I said, even if the dynamic had changed, that never changed. And ultimately, that's the power of food. That's the power of cooking. And that's the power of feeding somebody this dish that you put your heart and soul into. Even if it doesn't seem like it, it's just like a bowl of rice and adobo and you're giving it to somebody. Cooks know this. Chefs know this. We get more joy out of cooking something, putting it in front of them, and then eating it and reacting to it, then we do even eating food ourselves. That's priceless. And uh, that's what I learned from Mama. I miss Mama. The girls miss Mama, and Judy does too. If there's one thing that this story shares with you or maybe inspires in you is to look at the things you eat differently and realize even if you're not good at it now, you could be great at it one day. Just grab some eggs, make an omelet, fry it up, uh, you know, make something fancy and just feed it to people. If everyone did that, I think the world would be a much better place. People are already doing it. I think the world is a better place than you see on social media. It's 100% better. And I know because when you sit at a table and you're with someone you love, or you're with your family, or you're with a whole party of humans that are connected and you're all breaking bread together, that is life.
I mean, it is good. Thank you, Mama. And I'm going to miss you forever. Thank you for feeding me and teaching me.